Earlier this year, an article on the effective use of dental curing lights was published in the ADA Professional Product Review. We hope you'll find the article of interest because there's mounting evidence that the millions of resin restorations placed in dental offices around the world are not lasting as long as they should. Here we see an article from 2007. In this article, the author suggests that the low survival times of only 4.7 years in some studies may be due to the operator-sensitive procedure needed for placing good posterior composites. A study published in 2009 reported only survival rates of between 5 to 7 years for posterior composites. Another study published in 2012 also reported low median survival rates for some brands of composite resins. Why are we seeing these low median survival rates? It could be because the resins are not adequately cured in the first place. It's well known that delivering an inadequate amount of energy will result in an undercured resin. The resin will be less wear resistant, the bond strength to the tooth will be reduced, thus leading to more secondary carers, and there will be greater color changes within the resin. These are all factors that can decrease the life expectancy of posterior composites. There have been many changes in dental curing lights over the last 40 years. We started out first with ultraviolet curing lights, but we then quickly moved into using quartz tungsten halogen lights. Now we have both blue LED and polywave LED curing lights. While all these lights deliver blue light, the spectral emissions from these lights are completely different. In most cases, it's almost impossible for a dentist to see these differences in the spectral emissions. In addition to delivering different types of blue light, these lights often have different curing modes. While there are some laboratory studies that suggest that ramp curing may be beneficial, there is little clinical evidence to show that any of these options are better than using the continuous curing mode. Very cheap curing lights are now widely available on the internet, but the question is, how good are they? Gordon Christensen's group, Clinicians Report, examined 11 of these inexpensive lights. They expressed some concerns and concluded that clinicians should only use curing lights that have a proven safety and clinical efficacy. It's not just about the curing light, though. You also have to think about the resin that you're using because there can be a wide range in the curing times and energies required by different brands, types, and shades of resins. For example, you can see here that Densply recommends 5 seconds of light curing for one of their resins, whereas for another resin, they recommend 35 seconds of light curing. You can also see that the light exposure time will vary according to the shade of the product you're using. These curing times were calculated under ideal conditions by the manufacturer and the clinician should remember that the irradiance falls off quite rapidly as the distance from the end of the light tip increases. Even small distances of only 6 mm can have a dramatic effect on the irradiance delivered to the resin. Here we see that the top surface of the resin will receive 2,400 milliwatts per centimeter squared, but the resin at the floor of the preparation that is 6 mm away will only receive 850 milliwatts per centimeter squared. This can cause a dramatic difference in the amount of energy received at the top and the bottom of the restoration. In an attempt to ensure that their resin restorations are properly cured, some dentists may increase the light exposure time. But you have to be careful when you do this, because you may also deliver too much energy to the tooth or the surrounding tissues. And for more information on this topic, the listener is directed towards the article written by Spranley et al. titled Curing Light Burns. It is also recognized that light in the blue range of the visible spectrum can be very damaging to the eyes. This has been called the blue light hazard and it has been reported to cause photoretinitis, premature aging of the retina and macular degeneration. This is becoming more of a concern as the output from dental curing lights become ever more powerful. However, the blue light hazard can be completely prevented by wearing orange blue blocking glasses. In addition to considering the curing light and the resin, you also have to think about how the curing light's being used. It's important to learn how to get the best results from your curing light. A useful tool to learn how to improve your light curing technique is the Mark Patient Simulator. This device is being used in some universities and can be used to teach you how to get the best results out of your curing light. To conclude, dental resins must be adequately cured to reach their full potential. Thus, your curing light is an important piece of dental equipment. You should learn how to get the best results from your curing light and you should use the curing light for the correct amount of time to cure the particular brand and shade of resin you're using.
For more information, please read the full article in the ADA PPR review.